Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous night here in the end times. I am back in paradise. Sick as a goddamn dog. Imagine that. But I'm back in paradise here in Garfield, Texas. Looking at that little sliver of that beautiful crescent moon setting over the pecan trees here on Monday, Monday, March 19th, 2018. I think tomorrow might be the last day of winter. So I just had to get one more goddamn cold and sore throat. And look at my hands. I, I've, been, I've been back here for one afternoon with my hands. Anyway, it's good to have my hands back in the dirt. So anyway, I was going to uh, actually wait till tomorrow to get back into the Doomosphere. I am one, taking one week out of the Doomosphere. Uh, I've been on a long overdue vacation. So I decided to check in with all of my fellow tribes members in the comments. Good God. I'm glad to see that you guys have not been on vacation from the Doomosphere. And I will have to say that the brother Andy Gardner from Zombie Island has certainly been working uh, working harder than I have to uh, keep track of the collapse of a planet in my absence. So we're going to just... I'm going to check in with a dollar short day late version of View from Zombie Island to see what Andy has been up to while I've been partying with 400,000 of my closest, clueless, <coughs> lovable moron friends in Austin, Texas. And we're going to start with Andy commenting, oh shit, I forgot the name of the of our other other fellow tribes member uh, cussing out Andy and probably me as well for ranting saying that ranting is not the best way uh, to go about imparting your message and uh, so after being chastised Randy has this to say he is correct we need to go easier on the clueless morons, robber barons, denialists, and planet eaters. They are listening and considering our views. Oh yes, I'm sure the clueless morons, robber barons, denialists, and planet eaters are considering our views. So let's see a few examples of Andy Gartner going easier on uh, his, his fellow Earthlings. <clears throat> and we're going to start with, uh, not surprisingly, uh, <laughs> about his comments about this new supposed $22 per barrel uh, drilling technique going on out there in a test case out there in Utah. Uh, so... We will see if $22 per barrel dirty oil technology finally brings the planet down. Obviously, peak oil proponent Andy Gardner had uh, this to say about $22 per barrel oil. I think just claims, I think such claims are just another expression of the pretend and extend BS that goes along with peak oil and common to all hopeful techno startups <coughs> and inventors of perpetual motion machines, etc. It is just another pathetic marketing ploy to give investors a hard on so the money flows in and the CEO can buy himself a nice big McMansion far away from a fracking, fracking field. 15-lane motorway or Bucky's Mega Mart hyper complex. These frackers and tar sand companies are really just outfits to milk investors for subsidies. 
they say things like this every time, I expect the crap will be as expensive and low return on energy as ever. Peak oil ain't dead, Hambone, or why would they need to bother with coming out with marketing shit like that? One of the most problematic things with the idea that peak oil is dead is the political situation all over the place. Why would a shitty demagogue con man like Trump be in power if the economy of the USA was flourishing and swimming in energy? <clears throat> if all the crappy blue collar honkies were well paid and happy, like in the boom times, they wouldn't have been so angry and looking for a ridiculous blame everyone bet themselves savior figure anyway. If a cheap oil came along, it would likely put the rest of the oil business out of business, leading to rapid price spikes in due course anyway. <coughs> that might throw a spanner in the global economy that cannot afford expensive oil. One can only hope, but as ever, I still agree there is enough dirty hydrocarbons out there to fry the planet several times over. So we will see that, you know, they're out there right now uh, on this big test field out there in Utah, and they claim they are going to prove this year that they can uh, get this tight oil out of the ground for $22 a barrel, and by, the, by next year it's going to be $18 a barrel. We shall wait and see. And then we go from $22 a barrel basically oil sands extraction to nuclear fusion, saving the planet and completely obliterating the need for fossil fuels off the planet within 15 years. What does a peak oil uh, proponent have to say about that? <clears throat> this is not science fiction talking about nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion is not science fiction. No, it's just fiction with no science at all. It's a big, bald-faced lie. And the harsh reality is even if it was true, big oil, big coal, and big gas, with help from Fox News and the rest of the media, would never allow it anyway. So we are all doubly still fucked. Yes, enjoy the music festival, but you are not out of a job yet. In fact, your work has only just begun. Oh God, eight years, or is it nine years of doing this shit? My work has only just begun. I could have gotten two real estate listings this week, by the way, guys. If I had a real estate license, I would have made $20,000 this week. But we're not going to get into that. Anyway. Okay. What does Andy... We've heard what he thinks about $22 a barrel oil sands extraction. We've heard what he thinks about uh, nuclear fusion. Now, what does he think about UFOs and people who believe in them? <clears throat> it's a sad fact that clueless morons get confused by strange cloud formations, airplanes, satellites, and other inexplicable things in the sky even in the easy jet age when correct explanations can be found at a click of a button on their cultural compliance devices. I watched this YouTube video the other week showing some of these inexplicable things. Most of them were not inexpli inexplicable at all, even superficially. But one was curiously vexing, for a few seconds anyway, it was a sinister black ring floating in the sky. These things are popping up all over the world, apparently. It turns out they are just giant smoke rings created by morons messing around with a trash can-sized device. 
the device puffs the rings out and they hang around f for a while, a few hundred meters in the sky, making everyone around run around imagining a porthole into another dimension has opened up or something, for fuck's sake. <clears throat> Sounds to me, Andy, like it, it, it's goddamn geoengineering, clearly. This is, uh, Dane Wigington needs to be on top of this. Uh, there they are. We, we got it right here. Geoengineering in action. All right. Okay, good God. I'm only going to read the opening salvo to uh, Andy's uh, review of my interview with uh, my old buddy antinatalist on steroids, Gary, over there from the Inventum YouTube channel. Uh, <coughs> what does Andy think of Gary? I share a lot in common with Gary's worldview, but I try not to. But I try not to place value judgments on blind zombie replicators that spring up spontaneously, or the Azathoth-like universe that spawned them. Nature is not good or bad, and destroying nature makes no sense when there are countless other planets teeming with life forever out of our control. Well, let's hope, Andy. Even if we had any control here, which we don't, life will go on regardless of our views, so we might as well just sit back and enjoy the show with neutral ambivalence, like a child looking into a pond, watching nearly a whole generation of tad tadpoles getting impaled by water tigers and eaten alive so that a few can survive to continue the story for the next few billion years. Do other animals suffer anyway? Found a frog on the road the other day, its front leg crushed by a motor car going on some mindless mission. I put the frog in the pond and it just joined in the mindless croaking frenzy with the others. And it's still going strong now, leg hanging limp and decaying till the frog either dies of blood poisoning or something, or it heals over and he lives. Life goes on regardless of our view of it because it works. There is no purpose to it. And it is only an outcome of energy transfer to achieve entropy. So our emotional sentiments, which only evolved for some mindless aid to our pointless survival anyway, have no real absolute value. We are not gods, and there are no gods or any we would appreciate, and life isn't really special in the sense that when reduced to fundamental components, it is only assemblages of inorganic machinery, no different to any other matter. You could look forever but find no life force. <clears throat> Suffering of meat vessels, if that is a real phenomenon and not another subjective illusion of bio-machines that happen to rise above a certain level of complexity is irrelevant to the selfish genes that pilot them, and so on. Let the show go on in all its horrific, messy, beautiful, magnificent, malignant glory, I say. And then something I never thought I would see, uh, Andy Gartner uh, bringing us a Hare Krishna quote, all always was and forever will be an endless cycle of self-destruction and recreation. We will wrap up with the last comment when we get to it. Okay, now I did love this. You know, Andy, you know, I love Andy's cocky confidence. He's one, uh, he, you know, he, he kind of has that old, uh, 
Guy Bicou level of confidence. So this was Andy's first comment when uh, I got a, got a second strike, uh, you know, for getting my channel getting ready to be uh, sent into the doomosphere once and for all by YouTube, you know, where I, so I have this copy, this, this content strike because I am a racist. I use racial slurs, in this case being honky. And so this was Andy's original comment when uh, I told you guys about this. <clears throat> I think yet yeah, that the strike, I think the strike is just provisional because someone flagged the video. But as your sentiments are something the generally lefty neolibs who run YouTube would agree with wholeheartedly, i.e., you are clearly a good guy and against racism, I think the strike will be removed again. It is just some pathetic Alex Jones wacko causing trouble the only way they know, i.e. they can't defend their racism with reasoned arguments, so they resort to hitting the complaint button. And my uh, comment to Andy was, yeah, right. The appeal is over. I lost. It is official. Hambone is. Hambone Littletail is a racist against downtrodden, honky cops. And when Andy heard that, that his prediction was somehow did not bear fruit, shit. Sounds like another criminal, totally, non, totally non-transparent complaints procedure had my share of those on eBay. To be above board, both the complaint and arbitrator's decision should be clearly defined in writing so it can be seen to be fair and not based on the random opinion or political bias of some half-interested, barely-trained monkey on a switchboard that probably doesn't even speak English properly. Uh, we shall see. Strike one. Or ham mode the racist. All right. Uh, what would Andy like to see happen to the Koch brothers? I hope the Koch brothers live to see an economic collapse that depreciates their billions to nothing, then they get hounded and bullied for their crimes and, in, and eventually get strung up on lines of gibbets. Gibbets. I'm not sure what a gibbet is. Sorry, Andy. Stretching for miles with thousands more of their capitalist elite ilk by the starving, revolting peon masses. You know, that's going to happen. Uh... But what was uh, Andy's comment uh, about Rex Tillerson being sacked by Donald Trump? Shame about Rex Tillerson. I was hoping he and Trump would have an axe fight bloodbath in the Oval Office. Never mind. But Stephen Hawking dying is bad news. Ken Dodd and now him. Both were total legends in Zombie Island. R.I.P. R.I.P. Stephen Hawking. Yes. And now this is Andy. I was kind of surprised welcoming back my We Are So Fuck sign in the tribe. I actually found my We Are So Fuck sign out in the woods up in South Austin, Texas, where it blown off into the bushes and gotten rained on and moldy. And now I have left it there again. I found the goddamn thing, and I left it there. Anyway, what does Andy say about my We Are So Fuck sign? <clears throat> that little chap will get you banned from YouTube and the woods. 
Oh my fucking god, I've just spotted a video on the right preview strip titled How to Tell the Difference Between a Man and a Woman. Clearly, our blunt cardboard friend is needed more than ever. The We Are So Fuck sign is doing its bit. The mold growing on him in patches is like what big shitties growing on the earth look like from space. This is uh, Andy's message to Sancho Panza. Sancho Panza bravely defending the clueless mor morons at South by Southwest from an imminent buffalo stampede from a plastic buffalo. <clears throat> it's dead, Sancho. It's dead. And it wasn't the big threat when it was alive anyway. It's like the Western corporate hegemony attacking Russia and making Russia seem like the great bogeyman when in fact they are the great bogeyman. Poor little clueless moron Sancho doesn't see the invisible or far away real threats as threats either, just like any other meat puppet. <clears throat> Even when homo saps sort of recognize their danger, they often imagine they are safe when they are far from safe. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Uh, what is Andy's general opinion of music festivals? I've never been to a music festival. We have Glastonbury every summer not too far away, but I can't think of anything worse than hanging around with a bunch of annoyingly tedious musos <clears throat> with their little bands in hopes for fame, hippies, druggies, and crusties, fashion-conscious style police, and other clueless moron hedonist in a muddy field in the rain. And then uh, Andy decides he's just going to take the opportunity for uh, just plowing into a whole nother rat. Uh, not exactly about the Matrix, not exactly sure what this has to do with the South by Southwest Music Festival, but there's probably more of a connection than you would first realize. <clears throat> Humans as a power source is a non-starter because they would probably have a net negative EROEI like solar panels, nuclear reactors, wind turbines, etc which only give the impression of working due to massive energy subsidies from fossil fuels which are not factored in. If it costs more energy to keep the humans alive than they produce, it is pointless. In fact, I would say the machines would be many times in the red, especially considering the complex infrastructure required. The machines would be better off just scrapping humans altogether and just grow biofuels instead. Photosynthesis is, after all, the only sustainable way to convert the sun's power to usable energy that does not fail in entropy terms. They, they the machines, might encourage the Amazon rainforest to grow back and harvest the trees carefully and sustainably always with an eye to the future and not immediate short-term profit, Agent Smith would be totally into this, I'm sure, as he seemed to have environmental awareness and not just another clueless fucking robot. But could he keep the capitalist robber baron robots in check? And could he stop robots breeding like humans? That is the question. However, as the world is fucked, because of human stupidity anyway, and they don't need, and they, and machines don't need a livable biosphere. Being machines and not living things like humans, they might as well just moronically carry on burning increasingly dirty fossil fuels until they all run out and then die off. 
I expect the robots would plead ignorance of any predicament and go into denial about their cars, easy jet holidays, pointless reproduction, etc. All right. <coughs> then Andy really winds up here. Uh, this is his review of, <coughs> of anthropologist Ken Smale. Talking about the great upcoming human die-off. Although Smale's analysis of the situation is scientifically justified and correct, his timeline for decline seems way too conservative and seems like it is pandering to mainstream taste too much. The limits to growth study still seems our most reliable, objective, and thorough window into the future of population because reality has tracked the various curves beautifully up until now, and there's no reason why population should suddenly act differently past 2030 than what the limits to growth suggest, and some reason to think it may be worse as there has not been an alternative energy built out to soften the blow of fossil fuel contraction as built into the model. A Seneca cliff die-off is more likely in other words. And as I said to several people, I believe this Smale essay was written in 2012 before a lot of the uh, climate change news had <clears throat> come readily available. Looking at the human population growth curve up to now, it is safe to say that the shaded area beneath more or less approximates to the scale of fossil fuel energy burnt to propel this population to the incredible size it has reached. If you believed that the population could stabilize at, say, 9 billion, then level off and cruise along happily till just 2050 without crashing, then you are basically saying we would need to burn another block of energy the same or more than has already been burned since the start of the Industrial Revolution. That is clearly unlikely in the extreme, given that we have already burnt more than half of the fossil fuels and other resources, and they are the low-hanging fruit ones, to put it mildly. <clears throat> we are going to have much less, thus population will collapse. It is a mathematical certainty. Populations in nature that are left to their own devices bloom ungoverned by strict and rational population control efforts, uh, can never level off and stabilize. How could they? Under such circumstances, they must follow the natural order of things of bloom and collapse. Populations are always in flux, either expanding or contracting, never remaining constant. If a population becomes exuberantly and entirely uncontrolled, like the human population is currently doing, it inevitably reaches a peak in its cycle as resources that fostered its growth dwindle. Then, whatever causes the population to peak will cause it to crash in turn. As simply put, all resources are quickly consumed by the population that has, by definition, reached its greatest size possible given those resources, and as populations tend to collapse, to way below its pre-bloom start point, it is safe to say there is going to be somewhat of a fucking population bottleneck 
situation or worse. Well, yeah, yeah, you think so. And then uh, this is Andy weighing in on my overheard comment about this this mother warning her uh, daughter to pay more attention to her surroundings as her little child had already crashed into three earth people that day. There you go. <clears throat> Funny observation, hate to break it to you, but it's more likely they were humans playing at being Scientologist or some other rat monkey bullshit. Just seems more likely somehow. I don't know though. Maybe they really were aliens. Anything is possible, or so people say, a lot to allow themselves handy get-out clauses to unpleasant truths. It doesn't make much difference to the we-are-so-fucked outcome unless they get off their lazy alien butts, call the mothership down, and do something positive, like release a few civilization-ending EMPs or a devastating virus. Most hobo saps are alien to me even when they are not pretending they are aliens. And finally, what does Andy have to say about the, uh, the all-seeing eye? The all-seeing eye, uh, that, you know, that New World Order Illuminati satanic symbol, you know, the one on the back of the dollar bill on the pyramid that I found uh, out in the woods uh, neath the homeless bridge in South Austin. Shiva has opened its eye at last. Had to happen at some point, I guess. Yes, Shiva has opened is Shiva male or female? Well, anyway, Shiva's a good good guy or good gal. Shiva has opened his eye at last. And we shall see. But thank you, Brother Andy, for staying on top of uh, the Dubosphere in my absence. And... Uh, I'm going to try to actually get a good night's sleep out here in paradise. And uh, I Hambone will return tomorrow on another beautiful day in paradise, cranking up the Dubosphere once again. We are so fucked wherever my sign may be. Bye, guys.